couple of 2020 stands out, standouts, Cedric Van Pran and his running back slash unofficial official PR representative, Sean <laughs> Clayton. Um, guys, we were just talking about y'all's relationship goes back a long way, and as as you now get into the recruiting process, what's it like to think back to some of those those early days of park ball, and now to see where where it is where you have the Alabamas and LSU's of the world coming in and saying, you know, Mike could stay together for college. Um, it's really crazy, you know, just just coming from park ball. You know, we always were the top guys on the park or the team. Uh, even some people might say the conference, but it's just crazy to just. Just, just to see how far we've come together because honestly, I don't think, I don't know if he has, but I know I've never thought about it as, you know, well, I'm, I'm going to be this guy, I'm going to be this and that, but it was more or less I was just playing the game, you know, because I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah, like you said, been the top dog in football. Um, we, we didn't know that it was going to translate to high school because it started uh, our freshman year when we first came, you know, we. Everybody was saying, man, him was the best freshman in the state. But like in football, we never really thought of that. In football, we didn't even know we was gonna come to the same high school. <laughs> but like, you know, God blessed us. And you know, ever since we got to high school, like you said, that made us tighter. And he be on my ass 24 <laughs> seven. So I, 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 if I wanted to do something, I can't really do it. Cause I know he gonna, he gonna get in my face and get on me about it. But, um. Yeah, being with him is is amazing. Uh, same park, same high school, same college would be nice. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just say uh, What initially, I mean, you guys mentioned when you started playing together, when you became friends, you didn't realize it was going to turn into, from a football aspect for either one of you, what it has now become. Uh, what stands out about each other that kind of drew you to each other, or like, what stands out about Cedric as a dude that makes him be such a good friend or fun guy to be around or whatever, and then vice versa, you give a shot? His personality. Um, I don't know. You know, most kids in this generation, they out on the streets and stuff like that, like slinging dope, stuff like that. But Cedric, he, uh, he a real humble guy. And I, I, I noticed that about him, man. You know, when, when we first came to high school, it just got better. Um, when we was in park ball, he was a little goofy, but he, <laughs> like, he was just always, like, he felt like he was just everybody daddy in park ball, because, like, you know, just trying to make us, make sure we straight, but, um, yeah, he a real humble dude, uh, he good, he got good grades, if I call him any time of the day, when I need him, I know he gonna answer the phone, I know he gonna be up for me, um, you know, just, that is just the kind of relationship we got. He's just a real good dude. And if you ever do get crazy, he's big enough to, to kind of have <laughs> yeah. What uh, what stood out about a shot that you think kind of initially drew you guys together, even before it got to to be all this? I mean, uh, this this guy is very unpredictable. Uh, <laughs> sometimes you know he's very chill. Sometimes you know he may feel like he needs to have a little fun. And for me, in a good way, I feel like opposites attract. Um, you know, more of the time I'm more of the, you know, more calm and you know try to make sure I do the right thing a lot but you know he he balances me out to make sure that you know I'm not just a complete square some people would say so I think um opposites of track and we, we learn a lot from each other when he says he, he would be at risk of being a complete square would it <laughs> like sometimes he'll just be so like I have to get him out the house sometimes <laughs> Sometimes he just wants to stay on the game 24 7 and he just be glued to the game. I'd just be like, he can't, like, he just, he too chill. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just gotta have some fun. And you know, I, I don't want him to just be inside 24 7, so you know. Yeah, I mean, he, he has a point because honestly, if I'm not working out, usually I'm at home. Sure. So, Duh. when was the first time that y'all realized? how how far this sport could take each of you when you realize you were going to be um, I mean state championship contenders to be some of the top prospects certainly in the state uh, and nationally and to have the type of college opportunities start to fall in place uh, I would say um, 
when we first got our first offer, we both got our first offer by Kansas. Right. So I I'll say when that happened, that came unexpected for the both of us. Yeah. So when that happened, that's when I was like, this, you know, this is what I really want to do. Um, I could really change my family's life, my mom's life behind this, my life. So after that, I was like, you know, I started to buckle down and really like just stay focused straight on football. Mm -hmm. Well, I could say for me, um, you know, we received the same school as our first offer of Kansas, but we received it at different times. So he had, he received his during the season. I received mine spring going into sophomore year. But just seeing him and, you know, us coming from the same park, you know, it was, the more competitive nature came out of me. So I'm like, man, I got to compete with a shot, you know. I, I have to get on his level because I don't want him to feel like, you know, I'm not there with him. So um, it was more of a competitive nature out of me. And he really drove me just, you know, to, to take it more seriously because, like I said, coming in as a freshman, you know, I was a starter, but I didn't really realize my full potential. I was more or less just playing for the fun of the game because I love football. But just, just, you know, him receiving his first offer, you know, it was like, well, man, this is this is what I want to do. This is the path I want to take. I have to compete with a shot. Yeah. You guys talk about the, like, the relationship and kind of helping keep each other centered and stuff, even away from football. Yeah. How does it help to have that familiarity and that that trust when you're actually out there on the field? Because we've seen, I mean, we watched you drag this dude like five yards <laughs> in the Super Bowl. And, like, there's, there's clearly, I mean, a tight bond that, when you put on the, the pads and helmets, it's, it's still there. What does that mean when it comes time to compete? Uh, I know I could run behind him and play because I know uh, he gonna he gonna get his job done. And he he, he I mean I trust him so much because he's always got the job done since we was kids. So I know like he work. I watch him work in the weight room. If he catch me slagging, like he might really smack me. <laughs> like you know. So um, it's just. Bond, we like this. The bond we got, I know he gonna make sure he get his job done. He gonna make sure I get my job done. And like the dragon part, I didn't even know that was gonna happen. I, I don't need it with me. <laughs> I just, I just was running. I was prepared to fall on the ground and everything. I just felt uh, I'm just in the air. So you know, that's that's how I know that you know this is this is real brother right here. Um, for me, um, the bond is real because you know. I can I can even remember back to the first time we played Carter this season, you know, and we're down what thirteen nothing, and you know, Shaw comes up to me, bro, we got this, we got it. First play, we get on the field, I end up getting a pancake block, he cuts off of me, touchdown. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's it's definitely a bond there, and it correlates to the field because when he says he got us, uh, if I tell him I got him, we, we believe in him. Yeah. When it comes to the recruiting process, what has it been like to have one another to kind of wade through some of it and, and be able to bounce stuff off one another and stuff like that? How much do y'all talk about that? Uh, every day. Every day. Uh, I think this recruiting process is, for me and him, is really, it's not, I wouldn't say it's breaking us down, but like saying, you know, we have majority of the same offers, yeah. but he has more of different offers than I have. Um, so it's, it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's hard knowing that he, he can go to another school and I'm going, if I do go to another, a different school room, I'm going to have to develop a whole a whole another relationship with Someone other, else. yeah, other offensive linemen that you know I'm just meeting, um, and I, I think that's what's really hard. Um, if we was to separate, I think signing day for me and him next year is the emotion, really emotional for not not just for us, but for our whole 2020 class, because you know the, our 2020 class at East and we we are a family, and they see they see every time they see me and Burger together, you know they they already know what's up. Um, I think me and him helped 2020 develop a bond because we don't let our class, you know, we don't let our class break down or crack for nothing. Um, so uh, signing day for us is going to be a really emotional, a really emotional day for the whole school, you know, especially our class.
Well, as far as the recruiting process, um, you know, I feel that we do have a lot of the same offers, and you know, I really do hope that the Lord blesses us to be able to play with each other. But if we were to have to go our separate ways, that that wouldn't be a day, a week. Uh, I won't I won't say a day because you know some things may happen, but that wouldn't be a week where I would contact the and be like, you know, how you doing out there? You fine? Um, because at the end of the day, this is family. This, this is a brother, you know. Um, <laughs> even the girls we talk to, you know, we, we treat them, you know, as, you know, family, you know. You know you're a shy as a girlfriend, you know, your family. You know, so yeah. that's just that's just how we look at things. So even if things don't end up working out and we don't end up going to the same school, which I really hope we do, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's still a lot of love. Uh, still here. Is that been, is you two being able to stick together going to be one of the top couple factors and what are some of the other things that play to? Possibly. Yeah. Um I think if we stick together, I think that'll make my um that'll make college better for me. Easier. Yeah, easier and better because, you know, I know me and him coming in is you know, it's gonna transition it's gonna transition to college and it's gonna be like a whole nother start. Like this is just gonna start over, but we're gonna work harder. And you know, I know he he gonna get a starting position as a freshman. And, um No pressure, bro. Yeah, no, no pressure. pressure. <laughs> I, I know he's gonna get a starting position as a freshman. And you know, I'm I, I am too. Like, I, about to say, I, I can say the same about so, you. <laughs> knowing that and like knowing that we had a, the same school but it's on the next level, that's that's like amazing. So how did uh how did he become spokesman of, of their <laughs> offers? And he's the one where we're like, man, we might have to get shoddy if yeah. he's gonna break all these offers. How did how did that start? I'm guessing kind of organically, like he just did it one day and then yeah. it became like a running joke. Um, a lot of the times when me and Shy talk to coaches, we're usually together. You know, um, if, if one coach wants to talk to me, more than likely they're gonna call him. Yeah, we've been in the office. Yeah, yeah, usually we're in the office at the same time. So yeah. whenever a coach, but well, I forget who it was that it was. Arkansas. Uh, it was Arkansas. Um, you know, they announced to me that I received the offer. So of course, you know, Shy being Shy, you know, he's very spontaneous. He decides, you know, well, I'll put it on Twitter first before you can. So <laughs> um, it became a running joke, and you know, I'm, I'm actually cool with it because at the end of the day, it's his family. So I, I take it all as a joke. It's not like he's trying to steal my thunder, as some people may think. But, um, you know, I, I did it to him. I had to even the score. So just be on the lookout for that. <laughs> um, for, I mean, for folks that don't know y'all, um, what's, you know, what's something about, one another that that maybe people don't know or like a funny story or whatever and I, I guess said I'll ask you about a shot first and let you kind of put him on the spot. Let me let me let me see. Um, a shot, a crazy story about a shot. A shot on the football field and the shot the person two different people. Hmm? This guy right here, complete teddy. If, if he's in the relationship, he's in the detail. Oh, come on. Man. <laughs> listen, listen. You may not believe it, but this guy right here, if, if you know football, he's, he's macho man. You know, he, he does it all. But when it comes to the, the love that, you know, in his life, y'all write a book. I got a change. He's a teddy bear. Mm-hmm. He's definitely a teddy bear. Say the same for him. <laughs> Just in time for Valentine's Day. Oh. Tell me, tell me, <laughs> tell me more about about that dynamical setting. Um, his nickname is Burger Bear. No, Coach Pan started there. Burger Bear. Joke. So I don't know why he's trying to call me a teddy bear. But uh, yeah, on the football field and classroom, he the same. You no, know, in the classroom it transitioned to the field. Yeah. So you know he the same person. But outside of school. Goofball, completely goofball. If you catch him on the game, goofball. He gonna stay up at four o'clock in the morning. Goofball. Man, I was there to pull the ball. Man. Blow your phone up all night, goofball. He called my phone, talking about his girlfriend all day, goofball. So I did that and catch him at a hotel. Catch him at a hotel party, goofball. Hey man, all I do is eat and have fun. That's all. Nah, I hate you. <laughs>
There you go. A couple of the Warren Easton guys, 2020 prospects, uh, leaders in their <laughs> class. Cedric Van Pran, Ashai Clayton for TigerDetails.com, Jared Roser.